Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about how to create a pop art style image using Photopea because it's a little bit different than Photoshop. So I've got an image of our school counselor opened here into photopea.com. Uh, what I first want to do is to go down here to my adjustments. That's this half black, half white circle. If I hover over it, a little sign pops up that says new adjustment layer. I'm going to click that and I'm going to find the threshold adjustment layer. It's the fourth option from the bottom. When I do that, it applies that uh, adjustment non-destructively. Non-destructive meaning it doesn't actually change the pixels. It gives me this little layer on top with a mask. That's where I have my adjustment. Now, it gives me this, uh, this, this slider in the properties panel, which I can modify the image. I wanna kind of find a good happy medium spot, uh, somewhere like right here. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use certain tools to bring detail back into the image. So I'm gonna leave that right there and now I'm going to click on my background layer. I'm gonna select my background layer. I'm gonna go over here to my toolbar and I'm gonna select uh, one of two tools. If you wanna brighten something, we, you would select the dodge tool. So I'm gonna select the dodge tool. And let's say that I wanted to brighten up parts of her eyes. I could zoom in, get my brush a little bit larger with the bracket keys. If I wanna brighten, I just paint over any part of the image that I want to be a little bit brighter and it will brighten it up. We could brighten up the shadow underneath her nose. Um, we could kind of brighten up the side of her face all sorts of stuff that you could brighten up. Now the burn tool, as you've probably already guessed, will do the same thing, but opposite. It will darken parts of your image. So I'm going to get my brush a little bit bigger with my bracket keys. And whoops, I left that on the dodge tool. I'm gonna to select the burn tool. And with the burn tool, I'm going to just paint over the parts of the image that I want to be darker. And just like this, we're painting detail back into parts of the image. So we can paint back into her hair here, give it detail there, maybe on her shoulder. Maybe we can zoom in and bring detail back to her teeth. If that's too much, you could paint over it again with the dodge tool. So you're just bringing in or removing detail with your dodge tool and your burn tool. Dodge tool makes things brighter, burn tool makes things darker. Next step is we are going to add color to this image. So we're gonna make sure we have our, our threshold adjustment layer selected. Um, and then we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna hit the half black, half white circle again to add another adjustment layer. This time, we're gonna add a color fill layer. And when I click that, I get my little color picker. Here, we're gonna select what image we wanna use. Uh, you don't have to use realistic images. It doesn't have to match your skin tone. You can get kind of funky with it. We're gonna go with, let's go with like a, a fun little pink and we'll click okay. And by default, it fills my entire layer with that color. It is filled it with the color. That's why it's, we, call it, we call it a color fill layer. What I want is the opposite. So I'm gonna click inside of my mask and I'm gonna hit Control I. That inverts my mask. So now my mask is filled with black so we don't see any of the pink. So I've got my brush tool now and I select um, white instead of black. Anywhere that I start to paint white, which I'm gonna get a, a larger, softer brush, wherever I paint, it's gonna bring that color into my image. Now, by default, it's just kind of covering everything up. But uh, if I go to my blending modes by clicking where it says normal, and I change this either to darken or multiply, let's try darken, then I can start to get the selection that I want or the look that I want. So I'm just painting pink anywhere that has uh, her skin on it. If I mess up and get paint on a couple places where I didn't want it, all I have to do is switch my color to black and paint black on anywhere I want it to go away. This is non-destructive. You could also use the eraser tool in your mask to paint black, it does the same thing. Um, but yeah, we're just painting black to remove. So mine's not perfect, we can kind of see the process that we were going for. Let's do that one more time. So I'm gonna hit the half black, half white circle. We'll say solid color, choose a fun little color. Maybe we'll go with a, a yellow. Click okay, it fills the whole thing. Invert your mask by clicking inside of the mask and hitting Control I, and then go to your brush tool and make sure you're painting white. And anywhere you paint white will add that color. Now, if you wanna actually get the look where it's not painting over the black parts, click on your, where it says the word normal, click on your blending modes, change to either darken or multiply, and then you can start getting that effect. So you're just gonna repeat this process over and over until you have the whole image with color. Uh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five different color layers are what you will want. Uh, when you're done, you wanna flatten everything down. Layer, flatten image. And then you wanna be able to put them side by side. Now, 
I, in, ideally, I would have a full colored version of this. Um, let's see if I can open one of my full colored versions that I've already got. So we can have something to use. Let's see. This should be it. So I'm uploading a PSD file. A PSD file will always have layers, um, but when you have a PSD file, they tend to take up a lot more space, aka their larger file sizes. So it might take a minute to uh, upload it into PhotoP. So here's my image. This one has full color, and this will work for what we're doing. What I want to do is I want to take all of these layers and flatten them down into one layer. Uh, a couple different ways that you can do that. We could right-click any layer and say flatten image, or you can come up here to the layer menu and just say flatten. And that will take all of your layers and merge them down into one single background layer. I'm then going to unlock my background layer by clicking on the lock, and we're going to say image and then canvas size. And what we're going to do is we are going to double the width and double the height. Now, if you're good at math, you can probably look at this and figure it out. I instead am not. I'm going to do it the easy way. So I'm going to change this from pixels to percent. And instead of the width being 100%, we're going to make it 200. Same with the height. The height is now 200%. And we'll click OK. That will drastically expand the size of my image. I'm going to zoom out with Control minus. What I want to do now, go to my Move tool, move this down to the bottom, bottom left or whatever. Uh, and then I have, what I want to start doing is copying this image and putting it in different parts. So you can do that by holding Control and hitting the J key. That will allow you to create a copy. Another way you can do that is if you just hold down Alt, you can drag off a copy and put it wherever you would like. So hold Alt and you can drag off a copy. I ended up with an extra copy that I don't need, so I'm gonna drag this down to the trash can so it's gone. Now it's just a matter of adjusting the colors of each of these. Um, the easiest, best way to do that, least complicated, is to do it destructively, aka where it will actually change the pixels. A non-destructive edit would be like this. If I hit my adjustment layer, half black, half white circle, and say hue saturation, that will give me uh, an actual new layer, and it modifies everything unless I right click it and say clipping mask. Now it's only affecting the layer directly beneath it. Um, so it's non-destructive, meaning that I can turn it off, I can undo it, I can adjust it if I want to. There's lots of things I can do to it. It doesn't actually change the pixels. The pixels there are always going to be there. Uh, a destructive way to do this would be going to image and then adjustments and then hue slash saturation. That will pull up the same menu, but it doesn't add a new layer. It actually changes the pixels themselves. So the, the changes that I'm making are actually going to be written into those pixels. Um, but it doesn't add the new layer, so it keeps your, your layers a little bit easier to, to keep track of. So I'm going to do it that way with all these other ones. Uh, so I'm going to select the next layer, image, adjustments, hue saturation, and then adjust this to your liking and click OK. And now we've got it. We have our Andy Warhol style pop art portrait uh, using threshold adjustment layers. New saturation adjustment layers, lots of solid fill layers. At the end, you always we're going to save this one as a TIFF. Normally, we don't use TIFF, but uh, the Photoshop certification exam uh, wants us to know how to use that file format. So I'm going to say export as, file export as, click on more, and go all the way over here to TIFF, dot T-I-F-F. TIFF keeps your layers. Uh, it's also a what we call a lossless file format, meaning that it would, keeps every single pixel. Um, so we're going to make sure we've got it set here. I always like to attach my metadata. Uh, and then we will click Save, and you can save this image however you would like. Um, and then turn it in. TIFF file formats are pretty big. You can see that this one is about 273 megabytes, uh, and that is pretty large. So it might take a minute, depending on your, your download speed. Uh, one way you can compensate for that is to say image, image size and to size everything down considerably. Maybe we size it down 50% whoops, in the width and 50% in the height, click OK, and that should make it smaller, which would also give you a smaller file size. So uh, yeah, save it as a TIFF when you are done. But that is how to create a pop art style portrait using photop.com.